In this video, I will show you how to make a three band audio preamplifier with splitted output for subwoofer system. In a common audio amplifier system, there becomes two stages of amplifiers. The first stage is the preamplifier, which receives the audio input from the weaker audio source, such as mobile phone or tablet or PC followed by a power amplifier which drives the speakers and is capable of handling a large current and higher voltage. Now the preamplifier does not only do the job of amplification but it also offers an audio equalizer system. Human ears are not equally sensitive to all frequencies lying in the audible range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. From an article published in 1956 based on equal loudness level by Robinson and Datsun, it can be known that human ear is most sensitive to the frequencies between 1 kHz to 4 kHz and becomes less sensitive to the frequencies below 250 Hz and above 5 kHz, which again widely varies from person to person depending on the age and other factors. If we boost the magnitude level of the frequencies we are less sensitive to and vice versa, then we can have a perception of equal loudness throughout the audible spectrum. This is accomplished by using an equalizer. The equalizer effect will become better and better as you will increase the number of bands in an equalizer. Nevertheless, the circuit complexity will also increase with increasing the number of bands. To keep things simple, here I will design a 3 band equalizer which is also very popular in home audio system. But using the basic building blocks of the circuit I will design, you can easily add more number of bands into it. The input audio signal will first go to a buffer stage which will not increase the voltage but it is necessary to avoid the loading effect on the audio source. Then it will go to 3 different filters. The low pass filter will separate the bass band from the audio in. The band pass filter will separate out the mid band and the high pass filter will allow to pass only the high pitched audio that is the treble band. These three separate bands will then go to three potentiometers. Output of the wipers of the bass band potentiometer will go to the subwoofer amplifier. Thus it will also act as an active crossover filter. The mid band and treble band potentiometer outputs will go to an adder circuit, the output of which will go to the power amplifier stage. The filters are commonly grouped into three main categories according to their frequency responses Serbisave, Butterworth, and Bessel. Among these three, Serbisave has the highest roll of rate. The rule of rate indicates how fast the filter output will go down as the input signal frequency crosses the cutoff frequency. Ideally, the filter output should become zero immediately after crossing the cutoff frequency. But in practical circuit, it is not possible to achieve such a response. So, we design filters using some rules so that the response approximately follow the ideal response. Although the Sebiche filter rolls off in a faster way, but as you can see there are peaks in the passband response, meaning the audio signal lying in this small frequency range will be boosted, which may produce an weird sound on the speaker. Butterworth and Bessel filters on the other hand give the flat and smooth response what we definitely expect. Since the Bessel response is slower than the Butterworth, we'll use Butterworth filter in our design. In order to keep things easy, I would say that the filter response mainly depends on a parameter called damping ratio of the filter. This chart can be used as a rule of thumb to design a Butterworth filter of any order. The filter response also can be made faster by increasing the order of the filter, which is done by connecting second order or first order filters one after another. For example, to make a fifth order filter, two second order and one first order filter are cascaded to each other. We will design second order filters which is easy to design and sufficient for home audio system. For the low pass filter, I will use this circuit design which is called multiple feedback filter. 
since this filter output will go to the subwoofer system i will add both left and right channel in the same filter in this way for other bands i will use this circuit which is popular as silent key filter here if capacitors are placed in Z prime and registers are placed in Z then it would become a low pass filter and interchanging the capacitors and registers it will become a high pass filter. For simulation I am using LT Spice which is a free software from analog devices because I will use TL072 op amp which is a high slew rate and low noise op amp from Texas Instruments. I will download its spice model and include in our design. This is the buffer stage with voltage gain negative 1 and this is the baseband filter. How did I calculate the values of resistors and capacitors here? I am coming into that later. First let me explain about the mid and treble band filters. The mid band has two filters in cascade. First one is a high pass filter of silent key type. From the design table its damping ratio should be 0 0.707 so gain will be 3 minus 2 into damping ratio equals to 1.586 so i chose r8 equals to 56 kilo ohm and r7 equals to 100 kilo ohm now the cutoff frequency i want to set at 420 hertz capacitors i am choosing 680 picofarad so r6 and r9 value will be 560 kilo ohm the second stage of the mid band is a low pass filter the gain would be same as the previous one so r14 and r15 equals to 100 kilo ohm and 56 kilo ohm respectively i want the cutoff frequency at 2.3 kilohertz i am choosing the capacitor value equals to 150 picofarad so R13 and R12 would be 470 kilo ohm. For the treble filter which is a silent key type high pass filter I set the cutoff frequency at 3.3 kilohertz. So the component values were calculated in a similar way as previous. All the calculations you will find in the github repository for this project the link of which I am putting in the video description. If you are interested please check out going into this link. Here you might be noticing that I did not choose the upper cutoff frequency of the mid band and the cutoff frequency of the treble band at the same point. This is because at the cutoff frequency the filter output will become 1 by root 2 times of the pass band. Now let's say I choose the cutoff frequency of both the filters at 3 kilohertz and if I add them up then the output will be 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 equals to root 2 times the passband magnitude at 3 kilohertz. So and where ripple would appear in the preamplifier output. Now I will talk about the low pass filter for the baseband. The gain I wanted to set approximately 4 means 12 decibel. So I chose R equals to 470 kilo ohm and R equals to 100 kilo ohm which will give a gain of around 13 decibel. The cutoff frequency I want to set at 250 hertz. We have this equation for the damping ratio and from the design table we know that the damping ratio should be 0 0.707. At this point if I choose C8 arbitrarily as 18 nanofarad then R2 equals to 13.9 kilo ohm or approximately 39 kilo ohm. Now from the cutoff frequency equation I found C1 equals to approximately 1.2 nanofarad. 
If you are too lazy like me to do all these mathematics, then you may go to this website of Okawa Electric Design. I'm not sure about the pronunciation. And by clicking on the multiple feedback low pass filter design tool, enter the values of R1, R2, R3, C1, and C2. Clicking on the calculate button, it will show up the damping ratio along with the filter response curve and a few other parameters. So you can play with the values of resistors and capacitors to get a damping ratio of approximately 0.707. With this I am done with the filter design part. Next I connected the base mid and treble to 3 potentiometers. The wipers of mid and treble band will go to this adder circuit which gives the preamplifier output. The wiper of the base potentiometer will go to the output for subwoofer amplifier. Let me run the AC analysis with frequency sweep from 20 Hz to 30 kHz decade, 200 points per decade. As you can see, the V out has a flat response in between 1 kHz to 30 kHz. On the other hand, the subwoofer signal is dying out at a constant rate of approximately minus 40 dB per decade after 250 Hz. Right now, all the outputs are at near 12 dB and the potentiometers are set at 100%. Now, if I lower the base potentiometer to 50% and run, the subwoofer output became near 7.5 dB. All other bands are at 12 dB. Now let me reduce the mid level by setting the mid control potentiometer at 50%. Not in the V out, the mid band went down to the 6 dB. Similarly, decreasing the treble potentiometer to 50%. Now all three bands are near 6 dB. After being satisfied with my circuit in simulation, I started designing the PCB layout in CADSoft Eagle. As always, I will upload all the design files including the LTSPI schematic and PCB Gerber files into the GitHub so that anyone can download and recreate or improve them. The repository link is given in the description below. After getting the fabricated PCB on my hand, I started soldering the components. To test the circuit, I have connected the desktop audio to the preamplifier input. The V out is connected to a stereo amplifier and the subwoofer out is connected to another power amplifier driving a subwoofer.
All the controls are working fine, even better than what I thought they could be. This video became a bit longer because I wanted to cover all the steps I went through to make this uh, preamplifier. Thank you very much for watching this video until this end. I hope you enjoyed it. Please put your valuable remarks in the comment section and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This motivates me a lot to make new videos. I'll say goodbye for now and I will meet again in the next video.